Shock is a critical medical condition, which consists of a range of categories, each with distinct triggers, manifestations, and therapeutic implications. The five types of shock are hypovolemic shock, cardiogenic shock, distributive shock, septic shock, and obstructive shock. Distributive shock includes anaphylactic shock, neurogenic shock, and the early stage of septic shock, warm shock. Hypovolemic shock Hypovolemic shock occurs when there is a significant loss of blood and body fluids, often due to trauma or injury. For example, a severe car accident resulting in massive internal bleeding can trigger this type of shock. When a person loses approximately one-fifth or more of their blood volume, the heart has difficulty pumping enough blood to vital organs. This deficiency in oxygen-rich blood circulation can cause organ dysfunction and even failure. The early signs of hypovolemic shock include low blood pressure, rapid heart rate, and pale, cool skin. Immediate fluid replacement through intravenous fluids is a cornerstone of treatment. Cardiogenic shock. Cardiogenic shock is a life-threatening condition that occurs when the heart cannot pump enough blood to meet the body's needs. For example, the heart's muscles can be severely damaged during a heart attack, impeding its pumping efficiency. Additionally, conditions like severe heart failure can also contribute to cardiogenic shock. ECG and cardiac biomarker levels are two important tools for diagnosis of cardiogenic shock. Treatment for cardiogenic shock is aimed at improving the heart's pumping ability and restoring blood flow to the body. Medications include inotropic agents, such as dobutamine and epinephrine, and vasopressors, such as norepinephrine. Coronary angioplasty and stenting may be used to open blocked arteries. Distributive shock Distributive shock, also known as vasodilatory shock, is characterized by the impaired distribution of blood flow and excessive vasodilation. In this type of shock, the body is unable to get enough blood to the heart, brain, and kidneys, leading to inadequate tissue perfusion. Examples of distributive shock include anaphylactic shock, neurogenic shock, and the early stage of septic shock. Anaphylactic shock Anaphylactic shock is a life-threatening systemic allergic reaction, triggered by substances like foods, insect stings, or medications. For instance, a peanut-allergic individual, consuming even trace amounts of peanuts, can experience anaphylactic shock. Symptoms of anaphylactic shock include hives, swelling, abdominal pain, difficulty breathing, airway constriction, bronchospasm, angioedema, and severe hypotension. Anaphylactic shock is a medical emergency and requires prompt treatment. The first-line treatment of anaphylactic shock is intramuscular epinephrine, 0.3 to 0.5 mg in adults, 0.01 mg per kilogram in children, maximum, 0.3 mg. Educate patients with known allergies about carrying an epinephrine autoinjector, APPEN, and avoiding allergens. Neurogenic shock. Neurogenic shock occurs in patients with spinal cord injury above the T6 level. The disruption in autonomic nervous system control results in widespread vasodilation, relative bradycardia, and hypotension. In patients with suspected spinal cord injury, immobilize and stabilize the spine to prevent further damage during initial assessment and management. Intravenous fluids and vasopressors, such as dopamine and norepinephrine, may be necessary to restore and maintain blood pressure and heart rate. Septic shock. Septic shock results from widespread infection, usually due to bacteria, leading to a systemic inflammatory response. It primarily affects vulnerable populations such as infants, the elderly, and those with compromised immune systems. For instance, a severe urinary tract infection can progress to sepsis and subsequently to septic shock. The early stage of septic shock, also known as warm or hyperdynamic shock, is a type of distributive shock in which the pulse pressure is widened due to vasodilation. Signs of sepsis include fever, chills, hypothermia, confusion, hyperventilation, warm skin in the early stage, and clammy skin in the late stage. 
early recognition and management of sepsis may prevent progression to septic shock. Swift administration of broad-spectrum antibiotics is pivotal while awaiting culture results. Identify the source of infection and treat it with surgery if indicated. Monitor patients closely for signs of multi-organ dysfunction, as septic shock can lead to organ failure. Obstructive shock Obstructive shock is characterized by a significant reduction in blood flow to the body's tissues and organs due to obstruction of blood flow within the circulatory system. This obstruction can occur within the heart, major blood vessels, or other structures that affect the heart's ability to pump blood. Examples of obstructive shock include pulmonary embolism, cardiac tamponade, tension pneumothorax, vena cava compression syndrome, and mediastinal tumors. The definitive treatment of obstructive shock depends on the underlying cause and may include surgical drainage or pericardiocentesis to remove pericardial fluid or air, removal of an embolism with surgery or a catheter, or replacing a severely narrowed aortic valve. The treatment options for shock depend on the type of shock and the underlying cause. Here are some of the common treatment options for shock. Crystalloid resuscitation restores intravascular volume and improves blood pressure in hypovolemic or septic patients. Point-of-care ultrasound, POCUS, is a diagnostic tool that can help identify the underlying cause of shock, such as obstructive shock. In cases of hemorrhagic shock, blood products such as packed red blood cells may be administered to replace lost blood volume. Norepinephrine is a vasopressor medication that can be used to constrict blood vessels and increase blood pressure. Dobutamine is an inotropic medication that can increase cardiac output. Vasopressin is another vasopressor medication that can be used to increase blood pressure. Epinephrine is a medication that can be used to treat anaphylaxis, asthma, or atrioventricular block. Methylene blue is a medication that can be used to treat distributive shock caused by nitric oxide overproduction. High-dose insulin euglycemic therapy, HIET, is a treatment strategy that involves administering high doses of insulin to improve myocardial contractility, especially in cases of overdose from beta blockers or calcium channel blockers. Extracorporeal life support, ECLS, is a life support technique that can be used in cases of refractory shock to provide temporary support for the heart and lungs. The specific treatment approach for shock depends on the underlying cause and severity of the condition. In conclusion, understanding the different types of shocks is crucial for healthcare professionals to provide timely and effective interventions. Recognizing the underlying triggers, clinical presentations, and appropriate management strategies ensures optimal patient outcomes. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscription button. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below in the comment section.